Alrighty, so tonight we are going into part five of the fragrance of Christ. And as we talked to you about the fragrance of Christ uh, last week, we left off talking to you about the tabernacle and just touching a little bit about the tabernacle. And uh, as we got, uh, got onto the tabernacle, I, I said that, you know, if you look at the outer court of the tabernacle where it's opened, uh, you will you will uh, realize or you could picture uh, Jesus on the altar of sacrifice. Jesus is the ultimate sacrifice. He is the Lamb of God that was slain from the foundations of the earth according to the Holy Scriptures. And so Jesus was on the altar of sacrifice and the fragrance that is, that is emitted from Jesus himself, the Christ, the anointed one, the fragrance that's emitted is actually every born again believer and every time you fulfill your destiny, fulfill the call of God, fulfill your assignment, you give off a fragrance that is sweet, a sweet savor in the nostrils of God or in the presence of God. Now, well, our foundational scripture has always been 2 um, Corinthians chapter 2 verse number 15. Welcome Pastor, Hayes, uh, Pastor Kenny. <laughs> And uh, Pastor Iris and Steffi, we welcome you all, JD, everybody, uh, uh, Trevino, we welcome all of you tonight. So uh, our foundational script, script has always been 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse number 15. And, and before I read that, uh, let's just pray tonight. Let's, let's pray. My dear wife is going to pray and uh, just release the anointing over your life. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you that we can come into your presence today to just get closer to you and have, have intimacy with you thank tonight you as you Lord. reveal a greater revelation of your word unto us. And we thank you, Father, that as we go through tonight's message, that we will absorb everything that you teach us. And we will take it into heart, we will meditate on it, and we will apply it into our lives. And we thank you, Father, that your grace overflows to every believer. Mm. Your love empowers every single person yes. listening to this message. And we thank you, Father, that whatever is said today is your word. It comes from the truth of the mm. word of God. And we thank you that we are able to learn a deeper revelation every time we connect with you. Oh, and we thank you, Jesus, for giving us this amazing teaching that you have done from the sacrifice up to eternity, you have given us a pattern on how to follow, how to pray, and how to live our lives to become closer Lord, from the outer Lord. court into the most holy place. And we thank you, Holy Spirit, that you're our teacher, you're the revealer yes. of the truth, yes. and you will guide us every step of the way as we teach the word of Jesus unto his people. And we thank you, Holy Spirit, that we surrender all of that we yes. have unto you tonight, Hallelujah. that you minister through us the truth of God's word. And we wonderful. thank you that every heart will be blessed tonight by the word of God. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, praise God. We've already sensed the anointing in our home. We sense an anointing through that prayer and thank God for His Holy Spirit that leads and guides us as we begin to impart the Word of God with you. And so, um, as we, we begin to talk about what 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse number 15 says, we see that the Bible says, for we are a fragrance or we are the sweet fragrance in the Amplified, it says that we are the sweet fragrance of Christ, which exhales unto God among those who are being saved and among those who are perishing. So we are the sweet fragrance of Christ that exhales unto God, that exhales to God. So we thank God that we are the fragrance of Christ. So I want you to make that confession or write that down. I am a fragrance of Christ unto God. I know we've done it a couple of weeks now, but it'd be wonderful if you could say that, that I am a fragrance of Christ unto God. I am a fragrance of Christ unto God. And so when you think about you being the fragrance of Christ unto God, uh, you have to remind yourself whenever you're sharing the word, whenever you speak, whenever you pray, whenever you lay hands on people, whenever you send an encouragement, what is the aroma that reaches unto God during this time or during this message or during this uh, encouragement and phone call? What, are, what is the fragrance of Christ that exhales out, out of you? Because remember, outside of the sacrifice, you have no fragrance of Christ. Outside of Jesus, you have no fragrance of Christ. Outside of the Word, you have no fragrance of Christ. So you have to be the fragrance of Christ that exhales 
unto God and to the world, you still are a fragrance of Christ, and unto the believer, you are a fragrance of Christ. However, some will reject you and some will embrace you. And the people who embrace you today could be the people that will turn around and reject you tomorrow. But is when they reject you, are you still emitting the same fragrance of Jesus Christ around you? Or are you allowing the rejection to contaminate the fragrance of Christ? Especially when you get hurt, especially when you realize that, you know, where, the way you feel is not of God. And you want to get rid of it because you want to be a sweet, wonderful fragrance of Christ unto God. So if you want to be a sweet fragrance of Christ unto God, you need to remind yourself in every circumstance, every situation, no matter what you face, family of God, you have to emit the wonderful, sweet fragrance of Jesus Christ to the world. And that's our responsibility, no matter how you feel. What would Jesus say? What would Jesus say when uh, when he was hurt? What would Jesus say when he uh, if he he was betrayed? What would Jesus say if he had lack? What would Jesus say? So we just use that as a reference point so that we can get our minds thinking like Christ, get our minds thinking like the anointed one. And we spoke about this last week that that Christ, the name Christ next to the uh, name, next to the name of Jesus uh, is not his surname. Christ is a revelation of his character. Christ is the revealing of the anointing on his life. The, the, the word Christ, it reveals everything about his nature, his character, his attitude, everything about Jesus, who was the sacrificial lamb placed on the altar. Everything about him is revealed in the word Christ, Jesus Christ, the anointed one and his anointing, the anointed one and the surrender of his will to the father. That's part of his character, the anointed one who walked in the footsteps of his father, for he said, I, would, I do nothing unless I see my father do it first. So Jesus came as an absolute, uh, uh, as one who absolutely surrendered to the will of, father, of the father. Why are we talking about the fragrance of Christ? That because every time you speak, every time you approach a situation, you approach a circumstance, you approach the challenges in your life, what are you? You become the fragrance. Now, Indians will understand this. I'm not sure if any other race will understand it. But when a baby is born, you know, they get uh, a newborn baby. You will understand this. They get colds and then they put something. Uh, yes, they put a, a thing called uh, some Samrani. I don't know how you pronounce it probably, but Samrani. I heard the people say that. And uh, the whole house <laughs> is, uh, is filled with that scent. So they throw it on the hot coals of fire. The smoke begins to fill the atmosphere and the entire house is filled with this fragrance, which is which is very unique because they don't use it at any other time that I know of. The only other time. Oh, OK, I, mean, <laughs> <laughs> I thought you knew a little bit about that being an Indian, being married to an Indian for so long. <laughs> but uh, that fragrance, that smell, that scent fills the atmosphere. They say, well, for whatever reason they do it, I don't know what, what whatever the reasons are, but they say, you know, it clears the baby's chest, it clears the nostrils, I think it is. And uh, some believe that, that I've heard this, I don't know if it's true, but some believe it chases off bad spirits and all of those things. So, so whether it's true or not, I have no idea. But they say after giving a baby a hot bath, bath and you put that, um, whatever you call it, onto the hot coals. They say that the baby, after the baby inhales that, uh, you know, the baby sleeps beautifully, peacefully through the night. And so when you think about you being the fragrance of Christ, Christ becomes the fire. Christ becomes the hot coals. So from being the sacrifice, he's the hot coals. And then when you release yourself into Christ, you become the fragrance. You are the fragrance that is emitted, the fragrance that is released out of the sacrifice, out of the hot coals, because you are in Christ Jesus. Can somebody shout hallelujah, shout glory to God right where you are and shout praise Jesus. I am a fragrance of Christ. And so, saints, when we talk about you being the fragrance of Christ, how do you do business? 
How do you relate to people? How do you relate to one another? How do you relate to the brethren in Christ? And so when you are a fragrance of Christ, there is no, listen, if you are the fragrance of Christ, there is no scent of fear. When you are, when you become, when you become the fragrance of Christ, there is no scent of fear. So when you write this down, because I am the fragrance of Christ, there is no scent of fear in me. There is no scent of fear in me. Because I am the fragrance of Christ, there is no scent of fear. Not C-E-N-T, scent. S-C-E-N-T, scent. There is no smell. There is no fragrance. Because I am in Christ. Because I am the fragrance of Christ. There is no scent of fear in me. So what do you smell like? I smell like faith. I smell like faith. If you smell like faith, then you are like Jesus. You are like Jesus. Can somebody shout hallelujah? So we want to thank God for for, for the fact that we can come together and we can look into the Word of God and we become the fragrance. The fragrance. Hallelujah. How do you do that? So becoming, oh man, we, we could go, we could go <laughs> so into this. But, but let me tell you this. If you want to become the fragrance of Christ, because I'm the fragrance of Christ, there is no fear in me, but I smell like faith, right? So if you smell like faith, faith comes by hearing, hearing, and hearing by the word of God. The word of God. So faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Faith does not come by fear, right? Faith does not come by negative reports. Faith does not come by negative people. Can somebody shout glory to God? All right. Mm-hmm. So, uh, as we talk about the fragrance, you are the fragrance of Christ. You want to welcome a few more people, my, my dear wife. Uh, all right. Uh, so, oh, Cami, Cami Paul, welcome, welcome, Cami. Thank you for joining us. Doctor Shmita. Right. Dr. Shmita, thank you and your family for joining us. I really, man, great, 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 great testimonies that I've been hearing over the past couple of days with what's happening in people's lives. Listen, saints, God is working in the lives of many, many individuals. And there's so many powerful testimonies that we've been hearing. And we thank God for what he's doing in this time. We praise God for what he's doing in this time. So praise the Lord Jesus. Oh, sorry. Uh, is there somebody else we missed? Mm-hmm. Okay. All right. We have to welcome okay. Angelique's mom. Oh, I think Keith Van Dijk. Thank you for joining us tonight. Welcome. So uh, when we talk about the fragrance of Christ and we talk about I am, because I am the fragrance of Christ, I have no fear. I am fearless. Uh, I smell like faith. So if you're saying all these confessions, then you must remind yourself that in order for me to line up with that confession, I have to be in the word. In the word. <laughs> Face to face in the Word. Face to face in the Word. So when you pick up the Word of God, you're looking at the Word of God constantly. You have to be looking into the Word of God constantly. You've got to get the right Word, family. You've got to be listening to the right kind of Word in order to build up your faith, in order to raise the bar on your faith. Can somebody shout hallelujah? So when you are in the Word, when you get into the Word and you encourage yourself in the Lord, you you get rid of the fear factors in you. you. You eliminate the fear factor and you begin to grow in the Word. Now, Philippians chapter 2, verse number 5, it says what? Let this mind be in you, which also is in Christ Jesus. Let this mind be in you, which also is in Christ Jesus. So if I want to become the fragrance of Christ, I have to know what, what his mind is like. I got to know how he thinks. Now, how can I know how my Jesus thinks if I'm reading the newspaper more than I'm reading the word? How can my wife know how I think if she's reading or she's watching? If I'm drinking tea and not coffee. (laughs) (laughs) Let me, let me rephrase. Let me, let me, let me get this straight before I was interrupted. How can my wife know how her husband thinks if she is not listening to her husband's word, but she is watching more Akshay Kumar, right? 
And now, because of that, she will be more contaminated. <laughs> Is it, did I say his name right? Akshay, Akshay Kumar. <laughs> the ugly fellow that's a Bollywood actor. Right? <laughs> Got nothing on me. <laughs> but how can she be focusing on somebody else's voice and, if, and tell everybody she knows how her husband thinks? See, you've got to know the saints. Jesus Christ's voice, His word, is, has to be so important to your life. It has to be so important to you. If you want to become the fragrance of Christ, you want to smell like, like, like Jesus Christ, you have to get into the word and you have to be able to speak the word in every crisis situation. I am the fragrance of Christ. I am not fearful. God has not given me a spirit of fear. God, but, but of, of love, of power, of love and a sound mind. So I am not going to allow the mind of the world to contaminate me because if I do that, the fragrance that comes out of me is not going to be the fragrance of Jesus Christ. In other words, the more time you spend uh, with the wrong people, the more time you spend with the wrong voices, the more time you spend in the wrong stuff, What's going to happen? You're going to smell. Yeah, contaminate your mind. You will contaminate your mind. And the more you spend time in the Word, the more easy it becomes to understand Jesus and how to reflect your problems because for every problem, there's an answer in the Word of God. Yes. And that's what's so amazing because somebody comes to you that doesn't know the Word Yeah. and they will say, this is my problem and you give them a scripture and say, this is what, this, what the Bible say. But mm -hmm. they don't always know how to line up the Word of God with the situation right. because they don't have a relationship mm -hmm. with the Holy Spirit. That's the one that reveals the word to them in a greater revelation. That's it. So, so family, you have to become the fragrance of Christ by, by getting into the word, by being able to speak like Jesus, be able to, uh, to declare the word. And so tonight, as you begin to, to get a deeper revelation of what we're saying concerning the fragrance of Christ, you no longer will, you, actually, as a matter of fact, you won't even sound like the world anymore because now you're taking it serious. Don't take the Word of God for granted. Don't take your prayer life for granted. Don't take praying on the Holy Ghost for granted. Family, if you want to mature in Christ, pray all the time. Pray on the Holy Ghost. You don't have to go and lock yourself away to pray. You can pray all the time. You can pray under your breath, even while you're at the office desk. But tell them how we sometimes sit in situations where people argue with one another and you pray under your breath and how the and atmosphere changes <laughs> and nobody knows, can understand what happened because of what we did. Yeah. So. You know, <laughs> the fragrance, remember we're talking about the fragrance of Christ. <laughs> so when, I mean, we sat with a lot of couples uh, who have been through challenges. Welcome, Pastor Seal. Uh, welcome, Pretty. Jerus, Jer, Jerusu. 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 Welcome, pretty Jerusu. Thank you for joining us tonight. So, we've sat with a lot of couples and we've seen how they forget we're in the room. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, I'm talking about when they come for counseling and they don't know how to get through a challenge. We've seen how mm. they, they begin to manifest uh, in the room. So, um, and the only way to deal with something, a situation like that, you know, if you're dealing with a couple now, remember, we're talking about friends of Christ, and uh, they always want to talk on top of each other. They always want to have their say. Uh, and they don't want the spouse to let them down in front of uh, the pastors, right? And so the best way to do it, and, and we love this, is, you know, take a, an object, put it in there and say, only the one who's holding this object is the one that's allowed to talk. That is if you get a chance to tell them that. Yes, yeah, if I get a chance to tell them. So sometimes we take a rock and say, so you're not allowed to throw the rock. <laughs> you hold on to this rock and only the one who's holding on to it is the one who's allowed to speak. Because if you're going to listen to all of their challenges, they forget you in the room and they're arguing and, and from coming and approaching you and saying, you know, we need help, suddenly they manifest and all of those things surface. So often we just stay quiet and we begin to pray under our breath and ask the Holy Spirit to come and give us the wisdom to deal with the root causes. And by the time the couple leaves our presence, they are in tears, they are repenting, and uh, you know sometimes uh, they just are restored immediately, other times they need a couple more sessions. And so I thank God we have been delivered from that, uh, you know, from, 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 from from spending too much time 
because if you don't listen to us the first counseling session by the second session you know, I'm going to ask you have you done done what was needed to be done then what? they say no we don't have the time I mean are you serious you don't have the time if you two weeks apart we normally get so no, yeah. not spend enough time in the word yeah and pray that two weeks and they, they yeah so they, they're not willing to adjust to the point of bringing peace within the marriage and so now their marriage becomes the fragrance of the devil and his mother-in-law <laughs> but the fragrance that they emit the fragrance that comes out of them becomes a contaminated fragrance and not the fragrance of Jesus Christ and we understand that some challenges take longer to deal with and longer to heal and longer to break them out of but family when you are at that place where you know that you have to change something don't be stubborn don't be stubborn change what needs to be changed i think the people that change the quickest are those that we've given instruction to and they leave everything they're busy with and they fall into that and they do that right and that is when all these people uses them a lot quicker or accelerate i think the the learning process yes absolutely yes. welcome pastor kevin chetty Thank you for joining us. Uh so uh, if I miss your name please forgive me. I'm just glancing at the screen every now and then to see to see you coming up so praise God that you you guys are joining us tonight. So when when you want to become the fragrance of Christ dear family you have to get into prayer get into the word speak the word of God and allow the Lord to release through you the fragrance of the knowledge of Christ because remember let this mind be in you according to the book of Philippians let this mind be in you which also was in Christ Jesus and uh, when you think about it you know we spoke last week that your obedience is not tested when everything is is going wonderful your obedience is tested in what moments of discomfort, discomfort. most difficult moments When That's you don't right. want to pray, you don't want to speak to God. It's yes. times that you literally <laughs> just want to go sulk in your own little corner. Yes. Yeah. So, so you you want to get out of that place of uh, uh, of self pity, because when you are in a place of discomfort is when you are being tested. When your place of discomfort is when your obedience is being tested, because. Uh, would you read that that point there that, that we spoke about you uh, last the, week? The fragrance of Christ in you is emitted when you choose to obey the will of the Father, especially when it requires a significant sacrifice. Hallelujah! Read that one more time. The fragrance of Christ in you is emitted when you choose to obey the will of the Father, especially when it requires a significant sacrifice. Hallelujah. So the fragrance of Christ in you is emitted when you choose to obey the will of the Father especially when it requires a significant sacrifice. And we spoke about the significant sacrifice. You know, in times when when you are required to make a sacrifice, but you know, when you get to the point in your life and you begin to take things out of context, you get your your you get your whole mind thinking at a point where you slump into depression because you are not looking at what the Lord God requires of you in that given circumstance or situation mm -hmm. and very often it's not that God see God knows everything about us but we don't know everything about us we don't know everything about us and so when you are facing a challenge there could be some stuff in you that needs to come out in other words there could be that anointing that needs to come out the what get rid of the baggage first. get it okay <laughs> get it on the baggage first, right? yeah. so we spoke about the junk in your trunk on monday you want to learn more about that you can join us next week monday <laughs> when we talk about seasons of change so when you are at that point where you know that that some things need to change in your life some things you need to break out of your life some things need to change because the fragrance you're giving up it does not smell like jesus does not smell like the word does not smell like the anointing and you want to get rid of those stuff that is contaminating you and weighing you down because if you don't smell like jesus then who do you smell like the world and if you smell like the world who's the who's the one who governs the world who, who you know who is it it's satan it's the devil So you want to you want to sound like Jesus, you want to smell like Jesus. 
you want the fragrance of Christ, the anointed one to come out of you, then you've got to begin to spend more time in his presence. And spending more time in his presence doesn't mean that you always got to lock yourself away. Yes, you need that. But it also means that you've got to communicate with him, communicate with the Holy Spirit. During the whole day, Communi- not just five minutes in the morning and five minutes in the afternoon. It's literally a constant communication through the whole day. Yes. And worship and sing songs unto Jesus, sing songs unto the Holy Spirit. Let that fragrance permeate your atmosphere. Because the Holy Spirit is drawn to worship. He's drawn to worship. So let the fragrance permeate your atmosphere and then it will begin to infect others around you. Mm -hmm. But if your bad attitude permeates your atmosphere, it will also affect others around you, but it will affect them negatively. You want them to be affected what? Positively. You want them to be encouraged. You want them to feel the love of God. And you might say, but I need some encouragement. Well, the best thing to do when you need some encouragement is encourage somebody else. Because in those moments, you will be encouraged. Have you ever thought about pastors? They cannot say, I'm not going to church today because my you wife fought with me. <laughs> yeah. I'm not going to church today because my wife burned the curry. I'm not going to church today because the dog bit me <laughs> you know, when I stepped on its tail. So, when, uh, thank God we got no dogs. But, <laughs> but when you're at that point where as a pastor, you're going through the most difficult challenges of your life, you still have to get up and become the fragrance of Jesus Christ to yeah. every person that needs the word because your pastor does not have the liberty. He's accountable to God. He does not have the liberty to say, oh man, I want to sleep in today. Oh man, you know what? The child has got the flu, so everybody had to stay at home to blow that poor child's nose. And so we don't have the liberty to do that. We have to be there on the platform. We have to be here with the word of God because we know the fragrance of Jesus Christ in us becomes the encouragement, becomes the breakthrough that somebody needs. And some people might not enjoy this kind of teaching and not enjoy this kind of message. It's fine. It might not be for you, but somebody, one person might need the word that we preach. And sometimes we are called to thousands. Sometimes we are called to just one. And even though thousands might be in the room, only one might catch the revelation and the mysteries that's been revealed because they can smell the scent of the fragrance of Christ. But it's also amazing that um, we know that whenever you have such a horrible morning and you decide, you know, I'm just going to stay home. I fought with my wife or whatever. I'm just going to stay home. Mm. That happened for a specific reason and that's a mm. test because it's normally for those people that needed to be in church right. that the devil tried to put an obstacle for you not to go and receive in the church. And we've, right. we've, I mean, you and I have had that as well. Yeah. But we sort things out. We pray and, and deal with everything. Correct. And then we worship God and everything just goes away. Mm. But you can't miss church. You can't miss a moment when you know you're supposed to be there with any excuses. Mm. Absolutely. You have to become who Jesus or who God wants you to become through Jesus Christ, His Son. Because... You, you cannot, family, you cannot, you cannot con- constantly call yourself a born-again Christian and give off a worldly scent. Because, you know, your words, your choice of words, your attitudes, all of those things plays a relevant role in reve- revealing the fragrance of Christ. Now, I want us to spend a few moments tonight uh, in talking about John chapter 12. Let's let's. Uh, read John chapter 12. We're going to read, if you have your Bibles, John chapter 12 from verse number 1 to verse number 8. You're going to really enjoy this. It's, it's a very common um, uh, story and you're going to really enjoy enjoy this. Then six days before the Passover, Jesus came to Bethany where Lazarus was who had been dead, whom he had raised from the dead. There they made him a supper and Martha served, but Lazarus was the one of those who sat at the table with him. Then Mary took a pound of very costly oil of spikenard, anointed the feet of Jesus, and wiped his feet with her hair. And the house was filled with the fragrance of oil, but one of the disciples, Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, who would betray him, said, Why was this fragrant oil not sold for three hundred denarii and given to the poor? This he said, not that he cared for the poor, but because he was a thief and had the money box and he 
used to take what was put in her. But Jesus said, let her alone. She has skipped this for the day of my burial. For the poor you have with you always, but me you do not have always. Oh, hallelujah. What a powerful, powerful scripture. So here was Jesus just a few days before the Passover, meaning that this is just a few days before he would be become the Passover lamb. And uh, this is six days. He's now in Bethany where Lazarus was who had been dead. So this is the resurrected Lazarus whom he raised from the dead is there. And the Bible says they made him a supper and Martha served. Now listen, they made Jesus supper in this home. Martha served the sister Mary sitting at the feet of Jesus. Lazarus is sitting at the table. Watch this. You got Martha who serves. Oh, let me do this way. You got Martha who serves. You got Lazarus who's sitting at the table and you have Mary who is at the feet of Jesus. And Martha is serving the natural. Martha is there serving, cooking to serve the natural, right? Uh, or maybe maybe you can re relate Martha to people who come into the house of God and serve, people in church who serve. They they to serve, but they need it. They are needed. But if you want to remain a Martha throughout, throughout your lifetime of attending church, you will never become the fragrance of Christ. Because there are moments that you need to serve, but you have to become the, 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 the Mary. You can be the Martha who serves, but you have to become the Mary. Lazarus, who had a supernatural raising from the dead, it's a supernatural power of God that raised him from the dead, and Lazarus who encountered that yet, he's sitting at the table. But Lazarus, at this point in time, now, now I'm using this as an analogy, not to say that Martha is wrong and Lazarus is wrong and Mary is right. I'm using it as an analogy to, for you to discover where are you right now? Are you the Martha who serves and forgets about the fragrance of Christ? Because you're more concerned about the fragrance of your food. You're more afraid, uh, concerned about what people will say about your cooking, about your serving, because you want the trophy. You want the prize. You want to be mentioned all the time. Are you Lazarus sitting at the table? Because many times there are people sitting at the table with you, but they don't have your heartbeat and they don't emit the fragrance of Christ, but yet they are sitting at the table in the presence of of the voice of, of God. And then there's Mary who is sitting right there at the feet of Jesus. What does it show when you sit at the feet of somebody? It shows humility. It shows surrender. It shows that I am willing to go as low as is required because I'm here to do what pleases Jesus. Yes, serving is awesome and we need people who serve, but can the one who serve get on the knees so that they can become the fragrance of Jesus Christ. Can the one who is sitting at the table saying, I am sitting close to Jesus, but yet at the same time, they're never willing to get down on their knees and say, I'm surrendering everything to him. Now, let me remind you again. I'm not saying that Lazarus is wrong. I'm not saying that Martha is wrong, but I'm saying that we need to move from so, even though we need it when we serve, but when worship begins, we get down on our knees and we worship, meaning we surrender, we humble ourselves. We could be a pastor in the house of God. We could be the, the, the senior leader, the senior home group uh, leader or whatever senior position you might have, a board member, but are you willing to make a sacrifice and get right to the place of surrendering things to God, surrendering everything that's standing in the way of assembling in the house of God? Because many times the excuses and the reasons become so strong that we no longer are emitting the fragrance of Jesus Christ, but we are giving off the fragrance. I'm sitting at the table and it's okay uh, if I'm not doing this. I'm, I'm, I'm serving. Uh, I'm taking care of things that are needed, but yet I, I don't come to the point of assembling with the saints and I don't come to the point of surrendering all so that I can become the fragrance of Christ. So that goes back to a different level of... Um, maturity and intimacy with Jesus. Oh my. Or did I skip your point? <laughs> say that, just say that, just say that. It's a different <laughs> level of maturity and intimacy with Jesus. Oh. Because one understand the process of always being at the feet of Jesus because he's our Christ. Right. And the others kind of 
too familiar and they forget the process of intimacy with Jesus. Absolutely. And more honored in the natural way of doing things or being seen next to Jesus rather than to be the one that's sitting on the dirty floor but receiving the most with intimacy with Jesus. Oh, family, listen. The, this, there's a lot of revelation in this. There's a lot of wisdom flowing because of the Holy Spirit. Not because of us. In all humility, it's not because of us, but because of the Holy Spirit. You've got to catch this tonight. If you want to change your life, you want to change where you are, don't look at man who applauds you. Look at Christ who applauds you. Look at Jesus who applauds you. Don't look at look for the approval of man. Look for the approval of Jesus. You see, there are many people in 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 the, in churches in our ministry itself that serve without looking for a reward. That mm -hmm. serve without looking for recognition. They will that's do majority. what it takes. That's majority of our team. That's the majority it's not of a our team that doesn't does not understand our heart. That's in yeah. the church at this point in time. Yeah, and we thank God for where we are. We thank God for what we have. And so when we look at the surrender of the people, we look at the heart of the leaders, we look at, at what we have right now, we thank God for what we have. We praise God for their faithfulness. We praise God that we don't need to encourage them every single moment because of the level of maturity. They have our heartbeat. And every now and then they might be distracted and we come in with love, we encourage them. With discipline sometimes we encourage them. But you know the mature never gets offended and even though offense comes knocking, what do they do? I am the fragrance of Christ. I am not going to respond according to the offense. I'm going to respond according to the Christ in me. I'm going to become the fragrance. I'm going to smell like Jesus, even though my pastor shouts at me. I'm going to smell like Jesus, even though my pastor says. I don't shout at you. <laughs> uh, yeah, you don't smell and you don't shout at me. But I want to smell like Jesus, even though my pastor reprimands the worship leader. Even though my pastor says, you know what, you need to you need to up your game. Even though my pastor says you didn't smile when you shook the hand of the new newcomer today. Listen, family of God, it doesn't matter what is said to you. What matters is how you respond. How do you react? How do you respond? Are you preparing yourself to be the fragrance of Jesus Christ when you step back into the uh, the sanctuary of God, when you step back into church, when you have the courage to come back to church, when you make the decision with, with your family that we're going back to church irrespective of, of, uh, of all of the sphere that's, that's been put before us. It's your decision. Nobody can condemn you for coming. Nobody can condemn you for staying home. But if you are out there in public and you're going all over the place, but yet on a Sunday morning you say, no, you know, I don't want to come to church because I don't think it's safe. Well, I think you need to just go and check out, have, have, have your faith checked out with the word of God to see how come you have more faith to go to the shop, shopping malls, but you don't have faith to come into the house of God. And yet in the shopping malls, there's more contaminant, more possibility of contamination than there is in a church building. Right. So let me put that to rest. Now, remember, don't get offended. Become the friends of Jesus Christ. So, what I'm saying to you is this tonight, is that if you want to become the fragrance of Christ, if you want to emit the, the, the smell of Jesus Christ, how are you preparing when you return to church? How are you preparing if you have returned to church to become the fragrance of Christ? Are you going to be the same over and over again? Because remember now, with walking into the church with a mask over your face, nobody can see a smile. So how are you planning to reveal the love of Jesus? The only way you can do it. Maybe with your eyes, or maybe with the words that you speak. You don't want to, I mean, you're not allowed to shake hands, or you shouldn't be shaking hands, they say. You shouldn't be hugging, so on and so on. And that's fine. But what words, what are the fragrance of the words you're going to speak into the lives of people? Let's start tomorrow. Let's start tonight. <laughs> Let's start tonight. What would your words smell like? What would your words smell like? What would your prayers smell like? And what would your worship smell like? You know what the Bible says about Mary? She took a pound of what? Very costly. Spike and hard. And what did she do? She anointed the feet of Jesus. Did Jesus need his feet to be anointed? No, he didn't. Did Jesus need his body to be anointed unto his burial, as he said in verse number seven? But Jesus said, let her alone. She has kept this for the day of my burial. Did Jesus need No, Jesus didn't need that. 
But Mary had an opportunity to humble herself. Mary had an opportunity to do something that nobody has done before. Mary had this great opportunity to permeate the atmosphere with her surrendered heart, with her surrendered worship, with her love for Jesus. And she goes down, she anoints his feet, but here is Judas, the big man. He begins to chirp. There's, there will always be somebody that will have an opinion when you are surrendered to the will of God. Somebody will have a negative opinion when you are surrendered to the will of God. Not everybody will celebrate you. Somebody will hear things differently, see things differently, uh, condemn you for what you're doing because you are surrendered to Jesus Christ. You see, that's why I said nobody should condemn you if you believe you should stay at home and live stream. No one should condemn you if you believe, well, providing that you're staying at home and you're not going anywhere. But and nobody should condemn you if you're coming to church during this lockdown time, uh, during this time that we are in level one. Remind yourself, family, we all got to be the fragrance of Christ. Let's not condemn one another. There is more condemnation among Christians against one another than there are in any other religion upon the face of the earth. Let me say that again. There are more condemnation among Christians with one another than there are or than there is with those who are of other religions around the world. And that comes back to your maturity level of Christ. The and immature the might know the word, might preach the word, but the immature want to condemn one another and think and, and, and have their opinion out there so that everybody, everybody could applaud their opinion. But family, listen to me. We must never fall into the trap of condemning and contending with one another. Could you contaminate right? the person's... Um, you, yeah, you, you contaminate the, the person's uh, faith. faith. You contaminate the person's belief. You contaminate the person's mind. mind. And as a result, you become the person that is now bringing the offense to people. And if you are constantly trying to offend one another, born again Christians, you have a problem. I don't care how smart you think you are. We don't care about your doctrines being better than mine or well, my doctrine's been better than you. We preach what we believe from the Word of God. You probably preach what you believe if you're a minister of the gospel. But we're not going to contend over, the, over the, the Word of God. Let Jesus bring the correction that's needed when we stand before Him face to face. But at this point in time, as long as we're preaching the Word of God, let's stick to what we believe in the Word and where we need correction. Go to our spiritual fathers to correct us, our mentors to correct us, so that we can become the fragrance, the true fragrance of Jesus Christ. Mary breaks open the, 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 the spike canard and it fills the atmosphere and there's this one person that chirps. In another uh, one of the Gospels, we find that the disciples chirp. And there's, there's, there's different scenarios. I don't want to get into, into uh, just aligning, you know, how many times this happened and, and who was it that did this and all of that. Uh, there, there's, there's, uh, there's, there's two different times when Jesus was actually anointed. But we just want to put that aside for now. Uh, or maybe three different times that he was anointed. But we're going to put that aside now. And we just want to uh, uh, leave that for another day. For now, we're talking about Mary's encounter. And we find that when Judas opens his mouth, Jesus shuts him up. Jesus shuts him up. So here's what I want to say to you. Let, let, let's read that, that first thing. The fragrance of Mary's sacrificial offering was so pure and priceless that it permeated the atmosphere of the entire house. And the fragrance of your worship against all odds will permeate the atmosphere when your heart surrendered to the anointing. So the fragrance of Mary's sacrificial offering was so pure and priceless that number one, it permeated the atmosphere of the entire house. Her worship was so, so I mean, it's her sacrificial offering was so pure, was so priceless that it permeated the atmosphere of the entire house. There was that one moment that she did this. There was that one moment that she felt led to break open the spikenard 
and she knew the cost, but she kept it for Jesus. And she premeditated, she planned in advance that this is specifically what it was for. It was for that special moment. It was, she was saving this for that special moment. Sometimes you, you, you need to make a sacrificial offering, a sacrifice of your time just to be in the presence of God, a sacrifice of your busy schedule just to be in the house of God, a sacrifice of what is required, what is needed just to be where God wants you to be. And saints and family, please, don't let the enemy, there's so many people that got offended with the preaching of the word during lockdown. So many people got offended with things you're saying because of assumption. They assume that pastors are throwing stones at them. They assume that pastors are preaching against them. You know what that is? That is the lost day work of Satan himself, where the Bible says many will grow cold and walk away from the faith. Not, not, not saying that you're going to walk away from, from loving on God and being a born and, Christ, uh, born and Christian, but you're walking away from the level of faith you've attained. Don't feel condemned. There is therefore no condemnation in Jesus Christ, but be convicted to turn from whatever you're doing that's stopping you from getting to where you need to be to become the fragrance of Jesus Christ. And look at our lives sometimes as pastors, we, if we get offended, we can't pack up and go to another church. Yes. We got to deal with it. Yeah. And for us, sometimes when we make a mistake, to be reprimanded by God is so much worse than being done by another person. Yeah. So I don't think people understand that we do get corrected by God and, and through the Holy Spirit and it's one of the most horrifying moments, a simple mistake where we'll say something simple, yes. but you'll be get so convicted with the Holy Spirit. So we are very careful what we say mm -hmm. and we sensitive, I believe, most of the time when we do something. Mm. But you shouldn't feel bad if somebody in church corrects you in a nice way. Don't get offended and uproot yourself from where you've grown and you learn and you get fed the Word of God and you see amazing things in your life change. And go and try and find another home because you're going to find the same problem there. It's not like problem stops. If you learn to deal with one offense, go to the same person, talk to them. And whatever is in your mind is probably just something to try and get you out of church. Right. It's never meant for you to remove you from church, but also there to make you to grow and understand if you're not going to get offended with somebody in church, you're going to get offended with somebody at work. Absolutely. But at work, you're not going to just take your bag and leave the work. You need to salary. Isn't that amazing? But with your faith, <laughs> people are so easy to just pack up and leave their faith, the place where they've received so much. And I mean, we've seen people grow tremendously in our church. Um, yeah. They had literally nothing. And within a year or two, they've got great jobs, homes, cars, and whatever they say, trust with me, this is what we want. Children, cars, everything. They got everything. Mm. But one simple thing, the devil comes and he takes him away. And he puts out the fragrance. Yeah. He puts out, see the devil, the devil's always looking to put out your fragrance. He doesn't want you to smell like Jesus. Yeah. He does not want you to smell like Jesus. He knows that God is so well pleased when you fulfill your destiny. He knows that God is so well pleased when you do whatever you feel you need to do to bring him honor and bring him glory. So family, what we're saying tonight is not to bring condemnation, but to bring encouragement to every one of you that are watching and listening so that you will raise the bar of the fragrance you're emitting because you want to smell so much better in the nostrils of Jesus, of God. You want to smell so much more better in the, in the sight of God. You want to be the beautiful fragrance that is, that is exhaled, that is exhaled. And you want to be that fragrance that is well pleasing to our Abba Father. So our encouragement, every word we preach, is to encourage you to be all that you need to be for the Abba Father that we serve. That's why we do what we do. That's why we, we love teaching you the Word. So the fragrance of Mary's sacrificial offering was so pure and priceless that number one, it permeated the atmosphere of the entire house. When your fragrance, when you're sacrificial, then the fragrance of your sacrificial offering is pure and priceless. When the fragrance of your sacrificial offering is pure and priceless, it will permeate your entire atmosphere. It will permeate your entire atmosphere. You know, I was just thinking about something. We had a, a problem a few years back and there was a death in the family. 
and you and I went there with Pastor Ken and Pastor Iris. I think they went with us in the hospital, mm -hmm. and it was just horrible atmosphere of death, and and just everything was so horrible. But we came there with such a nice fragrance and attitude, and started to just encourage everyone. And then it was like half an hour later, everybody was laughing and just happy. It was such a contamination of the atmosphere, even in the most hardest situation. And right. just that little moment of bringing that joy actually released a lot of the, the burdens that the mm -hmm. people had. And that's something simple that people don't realize they're actually able to do, right. is to go to any family that's going through something just with a beautiful atmosphere and faithful smile on your face and just encouragement and it changes. People start laughing and just so much of peace in the home when you leave. Yeah. So it's so easy to do that. It just permeates, it permeates the atmosphere. We've seen miracles. We, we've been in hospitals where, um, you know, pregnant mothers were, were, uh, went through challenges and, you know, threatened miscarriages. And, uh, you know, just standing in agreement, re re releasing the fragrance of Christ. Because what would Jesus do if Jesus walked in there? He, he would heal. He would bring encouragement. He would bring upliftment. So we become the fragrance of Jesus Christ. And because irrespective of how bad the reports are, we got to encourage people and say, you know what? Everything's going to be all right. Because when you say everything is going to be all right, you're not agreeing with a negative report, but you're agreeing with Christ that live or die, swim or sink. Whether you lose a loved one or that a loved one gets out of the challenge that they're facing, you know that at the end of the day, everything is going to be all right because you are the fragrance of Jesus Christ. You are releasing the fragrance of Christ to those who are in the room and it must permit the entire house. See, here's the principle. The fragrance of your worship against all odds will permeate the atmosphere when, you sur when, when, your, heart, when your heart surrenders. To the anointing. When your heart surrenders to the anointing. Anything can be done. <laughs> absolutely. So the fragrance of your worship against all odds will permeate the atmosphere when your heart surrenders to the anointing. The fragrance, the fragrance of your worship against all odds will permeate the atmosphere when your heart surrenders to the anointing when your heart surrenders to the anointing so that's the kind of fragrance you want to give off you want to become the fragrance of Jesus Christ and you want to become who Jesus would be if he was walking on the face of the earth to every person in every circumstance so now we're taking it in part five of the fragrance of Christ to the point where you look for an opportunity to become the fragrance of Christ. You look for an opportunity to become the fragrance of Christ because you want to get into that inner court. You want to go from the outer court of the tabernacle where Jesus is the sacrifice on the altar and you become the fragrance, the scent that comes of that sacrifice because we are, the Bible says, we are the fragrance of Christ unto God. We are the fragrance, the one, the, the, the scent that is exhaled out of Christ to God. And if you want to become that, work towards becoming that in every circumstance. You get together with your family. What are you saying to encourage them? What are you saying to build them up? You see, there's, there, there, there's wisdom in a multitude of counselors. There's a lot of wisdom when you sit together as church family. Because you speak the same language, you speak the word of God. If you are going to sit together for counsel with somebody that is not in line with the vision of your church, you are going to be drawn away. If they contradict the vision of your house, you don't become the fragrance of Christ. See, they could be the fragrance of Christ in another ministry. You are called to be the fragrance of Christ in this ministry. But if you are going to con contaminate yourself, unless they're speaking the same language, if you're going to contaminate yourself, then you are not becoming the fragrance of Jesus Christ. And you're actually working against God. You're working against God's will. So you can't do that. You have to find your home, be rooted in your home, and work towards becoming the fragrance of Christ in that house. Do what it takes. Become what you need to become. Fulfill the call of God. Get on Bible school if you don't have enough word in you. Prepare for tomorrow. 
Prepare for the next level of your ministry. Prepare for the next level of becoming a greater sin in the nostrils of those who need to hear what you have to say. Mm -hmm. All right? Thanks. So let's read that, that one, <laughs> uh, the fragrance of your worship. The fragrance of your worship against all arts will permeate the atmosphere when your heart surrenders to the anointing. Surrender to the anointed family of God. Surrender to what God wants. Become who God wants. Don't feel condemned. Don't feel rejected. Don't feel left out because of lockdown. Don't feel, oh, my pastor has not phoned me during lockdown. Please, I'm urging you, you become the encouragement to everybody else. All right? Let's not be immature. Let's be mature. Thank you for joining us. Mm -hmm.